Hello everyone, Donovan here with the Martial Arts Business Made Easy team and today we are going over 90 days to a black belt in business uh, boot camp, but we're going over events and extra revenues, okay? So these are things, you know, parents night outs, these are uh, summer camps, spring break camps, day camps, any type of event um, that we run, I'm gonna explain for you and then give you guys a ton of examples. Uh, this week I hope you guys are ready to download a lot of information. So uh, this slide won't be too long, um, however, I'm gonna give you a lot of just extra downloads and information for you guys. All right, so reasons you need to run events. I know a lot of martial arts school learners just show up, you know, teach classes, and then go home. Uh, you're just leaving way too much money on the table, and uh, you'll honestly, you're just not going to grow your program as fast as someone who does run events. So this is something that we focused on a lot in our businesses, and you know, all three locations, and uh, we do really well with events. One, turning money, and then most importantly, turning prospects into clients. Um, so let's talk here. Reasons you have to do events. Um, you can easily add fifty thousand dollars a year to your bottom line. And that has nothing to do with the members. That's just purely adding, you know, money for the events that you run. You can easily add fifty thousand dollars to your school, and I'll show you the numbers. Um, events are an easy way to get potential students in your school. So you know, it's a great way for someone to kind of, you know, treat treat it like a date a little bit, right? They're they're able to come in, check out the program, get a feel for it, kind of go on a date, uh, and then to see before they want to commit, right? Before you want to get into a relationship, you probably want to go on a few dates um, before you jump right in. Same thing here with these potential uh, students and your events. It's a great way for them to check out your facility, get a feel for the program, um, you know, get a feel for the extra things you do in your program before jumping right in. All right. It offers an extra layer of customer service over your competition. Um, so I experienced this firsthand this past week, and I'm going to give you an example here. So we had two parents, uh, well, actually we had three parents show up on this past weekend on Saturday's classes looking for information for our after school program. And two of them I signed up on the spot, and then one of them took some information, and they're looking up for next year. So for the two people that did sign up, they actually currently go to other martial arts schools in Charleston. So they currently are students. One has been training for a year and one has been training for four years. And uh, they decided that they're going to start coming to Charleston Taekwondo. And I asked, you know, just straight up, like, if you don't mind me asking, like, why, why are you making the switch? Are you not happy with where you're at? And they're both parents. No, actually, we're extremely happy. We love the instructors over there. They're great. Um, the problem is we need summer camps. Uh, we need after school programs. You know, we like date night. So we want to have a parents night out option. They don't offer those things, and we looked on your website, we checked out your Facebook, and um, you know we just heard really good things about you, and you have a great after-school program, you have summer camps, you have day camps, you have parents' night outs, you just offer a lot of extra things that we're looking for in our school. And um, you know I thought that's exactly why we do that, right, over our customers. All right, so moving on here, uh, events typically have a higher than average return on investment. So, um, you know, most of our events, like our last event we just ran last weekend, we did a board-breaking tournament, and we had... I'm not sure how many students, 65 students roughly. We made like $2,600 is what we grossed and, um, you know, easily net 1500 of that. So we we're able to bring home a good amount of money off of uh, literally a two-hour event. Um, all right, events offer staff members additional income. So, you know, you have those high school kids. You might even have your full-time staff, you know, or people that do this in addition to their full-time jobs. Either way, it's a great way for staff to, uh, you know, get some extra money in their pocket. Um, I, everyone likes extra money. Uh, it's a great way for them to work a little bit more hours, provide more value, and get more money for it. All right, um, and one of the biggest things here, it builds a strong sense of family in your martial arts community. So, you know, the, the stronger you can build those bonds, if you can get those parents to become really good friends with each other, uh, get them to hang out outside of school, uh, you know, the longer those relationships last, the harder it's going to be for someone to break that bond and quit your program. So the stronger sense of family we have in our program, uh, you know, the, the longer they're going to stay, which means we have a higher return on investment for our students. All right, so different types of events that we run at Charleston Taekwondo. We do birthday parties. We do summer, spring, and day camps. Um, we always do those. If the school is out, we run a camp. Um, seminars, we'll do sparring seminars. We do form seminars. We do weapon seminars, Jedi seminars, board breaking seminars. Um, easy way to spend an hour of your Saturday and make you know $500, $600. So it's a great way to do that, and I'll, I'll jump in and show you how. Um, Parents Night Outs, we do uh, the second Saturday of every month. We keep it consistent there. Um, we do with Parents Night out every month um, and again to make it consistent so parents can plan on it um, it is the second Saturday of every month so it works out really well for us and the reason we did the second Saturday of every month uh, true backstory here is the first time I ever did it was for Valentine's Day and it happened to be the second Saturday of that February so ever since then I have uh, just made it the second Saturday of every month
All right, guys, we do Halloween party every year. Uh, we do a ho holiday party every year. We do bowling nights. We do laser tags. Uh, we also do parents, um, I'm sorry, uh, back to school bash, and we do a summer kickoff party. So we do, we do quite a bit of events here. All right, so free events. Uh, we run several free events throughout the year as a perk to our members. Um, these are designed to build our martial arts family bond, and really that's it. We just want people to see our program as a family. We want them to be able to feel comfortable to bring their friends, to bring their family members uh, to check out our program. Um, examples of free events that we do, um, our Halloween party every year is free. Our holiday party is free. Our black belt testing events are free. Parades are free. Um, we also do our... Back to School Bash is a free event. It's a big one. We have about 200 people come to that. And then we do our um, kickoff summer, you know, summer kickoff party, which is, again, about 200 people that come. And, uh, again, another free event. So these are just free ways that we can throw a party for our members. All right, so the way you don't break the bank by doing these free events, uh, we encourage our members to bring drinks and snacks and food and, and different things to the events. Uh, this is a way for us to keep our costs down, and we provide a great event. And, I mean, you guys know how it is, right? You... You ask the parents at your school to bring, uh, you know, food or snacks or drinks to an event. We end up having way too much stuff. You know, we had too many people bringing food at our last event, and we told people, "Hey, can people just bring water? That would be great. You know, just bottles of water." Next thing you know, we have ten, you know, cases of bottled water at a taekwondo school. Now I'm like, "What the hell are we going to do with all this water?" Um, so it's a great way to get your family members involved. They feel more part of the family because they are contributing, you know, a drink or snack or food or something. So these are a great way to build your community. Um, like like I said, you know, Halloween party, holiday party, black belt testing, parades, um, and then we always do our back to school bash and our summer kickoff party. Great, great events. All right, so then, you know, a lot of our events every month, though, are paid events as well. So we want to make money for those. That way we can pay staff. Uh, paid events are something we host every month. We continually find ways to better serve our members. So the more service we can provide for them, the more likely they are to stay a member. Um, and then this also increases our average client value. You know, if your membership is $99 a month, but, um, you know, the majority of your members jump on your parents' night out at $30 a month, you probably just increase your average client value to about $115 or $120. So, you know, it's a great way to increase your average client value you free members. Um, examples of paid events. Every month we do a parents night out. Uh, we do probably five to six birthday parties a month. Uh, we run camps. So we run, a, like I said, summer camps. So we run a spring break camp and we run a day camp whenever school is out. So any holidays that the kids are out, we're running a day camp because parents need that service, right? Just because kids are out of school does not mean that the parents have the day off from work. And then we run seminars, um, you know, some really popular ones we do, weapon seminars, we do sparring seminars, and then we, um, our most popular one is probably our Jedi seminar that we do. Um, they get a laser, or a, not a laser, a, uh, I can't think of it, what they're called, like the, the Star Wars like laser beam that they fight with. Uh, I can't think of the name of it, but um, Luke runs that. He's our total Star Wars nerd at Charleston Taekwondo. The kids get into it. They love it. You got to capitalize on those things, guys. Um, all right, so it, it's important to know which events are free and which events will be paid. And the reason I say that is because once you offer an event as free, it's going to be really challenging to start it later. So if you do a parent night out at $10, I see people run them super cheap, like $10. It's just going to be really expensive or, you know, really challenging to get to someone to pay more money. So if this time it's 10 and the next time you make it 25, right, that's not going to fly. So you're going to have to make it 15 and then 20 and then 25. And then you're always going to have those people that are like, I remember when it was $10, you know, Charge what you're worth. Um, any events that you do, your seminars, your camps, you know, make people pay for them. All right, guys, so keys to successful events. All right, keys to successful events. One is just the planning. You know, we spend, I sit down with my staff in December of every year, and we plan our entire year in advance. So what we're going to do each week or each month, you know, things that we want to do, whether it be, you know, T-shirt sales, um, what, you know, events we're running, tournaments, black belt testing, parades we know are happening, children's festivals we know are happening. We plan the entire year in advance. And then, you know, when it comes to that event that's coming up, we spend about two months on that um, individual event um, just to make sure that we have complete systems processes that everything is ready to go and we know um, you know who's doing what and who's responsible for what activities um, so the big things here you know when planning an event you want to have create you know create checklists and then delegate um, you need a checklist for everything because what's going to happen is when you have that checklist now um, it makes next year's event or the next time you do that event much easier because you're not going to forget anything. You can just have that checklist. As the things change or you want to add to it or take away, you just adjust the checklist, um, but we're good to go. And this you know, means that you're not having to do every event yourself. You're able to just provide checklists for uh, your team.
Um, big thing here too is variety. Mix it up. You know, if you do parents signed out every month and it's dodgeball every month, the first two are probably going to be really popular. Kids love dodgeball. Um, the third one will probably start dropping off because even the parents start thinking like, ah, it's the same thing. You've already done that. Um, we mix it up. You know, we'll do dodgeball. We'll do laser tag. We'll do Nerf Wars. We'll do Minecraft. Um, we'll do Angry Birds. This month we're doing um, Secret Agents. So we have the kids come in as Secret Agents and then Rachel uh, is an amazing uh, creator of things like this for kids. Uh, she basically creates this whole um, kind of plot twist, I guess, or plot, if you will. Uh, myself and Master Maquin is kind of like Clue, right? So there's clues around the school. They do this big, you know, magic hunt, and they have to find who stole the black belts, right? It might be Master Ryder, it might be Master Maquin, it might be one of the other instructors or leadership team members. But we basically create, she creates characters for all these people, and it's a really cool event and gets the students involved. And it's based around, you know, faces that they see on a weekly basis. Um, another thing here is create attractive pricing. So you want to tier your pricing um, until you get to that point where you sell everything out. You know, we're at that point now where we do a parent sign out every month and it just sells out. So, you know, previously we used to do, hey, if you sign up in the first, uh, you know, say parents sign out, just for example, say we do the second Saturday of every month. So say it's on the 15th. So parents sign out on the 15th. If you sign up in the next two weeks, so the you know, last two weeks of that month, you're going to get our early bird pricing at $20 a kid. If you sign up in the first two weeks of the month, you're going to get, um, you know, our later pricing at $25 or $30 a kid. So what we would do is if they signed up in the first two weeks, uh, we would allow them to get a slight price uh, break. And then if they signed up later, they would pay a little bit more money. But still, it's only $5 or $10. They're not saving a ton. But it just, one, encourages them to get signed up. Two, it allows us to know that we are going to fill up an event. Um, but like I said, we're at that point now where, you know, we turn kids away every month for our parents night outs and our events. So for us, we don't really do tier pricing anymore. Everything, it just, it is what it is. Um, the only thing we do tier pricing for now is our camps. Um, all right. So make sure you have plenty of time to promote an event. Um, this is one thing I see with a lot of school owners. They just don't give themselves enough time. So like I said, we spend two months on each individual event. The first month is really just planning the event, making sure we have systems, doing research on equipment that we might need. Um, and then the next month is basically promoting that event, sending out emails, making videos, posting in our Facebook page, posting in our Facebook group. Uh, you know, we're just uh, commenting in class, anything we can to promote that event. So give yourself plenty of time to promote your event for sales. All right, so, um, you know, and the big thing to finish here is complete your event, recap on it with your team, and then improve. Just streamline the process, right? So every time you do an event, spend the next weekend with your team or that next week, meet with them, recap on what's happening, and then in ways that you can improve your event to make it better. All right, so when it comes to pay, uh, you know, payment for your, your events or pay structure, um, first of all, all staff should be paid for events, all right? Do not let staff work events for free. Even if they're like, hey, I'm gonna volunteer, I just wanna help out, give them a gift card, do something nice for them, something that they would appreciate. Um, just because you want people to know that you value their time. It's really important, right? Um, the only staff that does not technically get paid for events are salaried employees. Um, but honestly, they receive bonuses for quarterly goals. So for like Rachel receives bonuses, um, Luke, uh, you know, was tied to gross until we capped out at a certain amount. So, you know, for them, it's like, you know, the more the business makes, the more, you know, the higher the bonus is going to be for them. So they don't technically get paid uh, directly for that event. If I know they're working their tail off and they're doing a ton of stuff for that event, I will, again, treat them to lunch, uh, surprise and delight, right? Treat them for lunch, send them donuts, um, you know, give them a, a gift card or something just to say thank you. People like to be appreciated. Um, and then event guests that turn into trial members, you know, staff will earn some extra cash. If we do a birthday party and there's 20 kids there and five of them become, you know, trial members, I'll, I'll give each staff member $15. You know what I mean? I want them to know, or $15 per kid is what I'm saying. Um, I'm not worried about that money uh, of that $49 four-week trial. To me, as long as I cover the uniform, the uniform costs roughly $10. So I have roughly... Uh, $39 to work with, you know what I mean? I can get, if there's two people running that event, I'll give, I'll just split that cash, um, you know, among the, the staff members. All right. Um, so paying staff members for events, um, it just shows you that you value their time, that you appreciate them. Um, it's very important guys, you know, the, one of the biggest things I think you can do is just show your team that you appreciate their hard work and their value. Um, and then again, leadership team, right? They're not paid staff members, but again, we want them to feel valued. So I give them gift cards, um, free uniforms, you know what I mean? We'll, we'll hook them up with some things just so they feel, again, a part of that team and feel valued. 
All right, guys, summer camp. So this is a huge thing for us, right? We do summer camps um, every week of summer, every week. We're doing 10 this summer. Um, camps are a huge way to increase your revenue during the slow months. I remember during the summer, my first two years, you know, it sucked because we took a huge hit. In Charleston, a lot of people just want to go to the beach every day or they want to, you know, travel. So for us, it was just very... Um, a slow time, right? It just, you took a hit and I was like, man, we have to figure out a way to cover this. So that's why we decided to do our, uh, summer camps. All right. So for example here, we run 10 camps throughout the summer. Um, the average person for our camp, uh, pays about $189. Okay. So $189 per camper. We run 45. Um, to, to be honest, we just updated this. We're going to have to run about 50 kids a camp just because we're, we're getting busier. We're having too many people sign up, which is a good problem, right? But we have to figure that out. But for us, you know, at 10 camps, $189 average client value, um, at 45 kids, you're putting $85,000 in your pocket in two months. Our price ranges um, for camps between 149, that's our super early bird price, that's Black Friday pricing. And then if you sign up the week of, it's 219. Um, so, and, the, and we're actually gonna raise these prices because again, we're just selling out too quickly at these price points. So I want to be able to, uh, you know, raise those prices. But um, depending on when they sign up, it ranges between 149 and 219. We offer a few different options for campers to choose from, and I'm gonna show you what those are. All right, so for camp options here, our basic options, so that 149 price, that first early bird price, is from 7.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. And I'll tell you why we do these hours. Um, we used to do our camps from like nine to three, because then our class started at three, we needed the kids out of there. And I was like, well, it's nine, you know, parents work at nine, it's fine. Uh, the problem here is that parents have to work at nine. So that means they need to drop their kid off before that. So we had a lot of parents, either one, just dropping their kid off super early, or two, they were, um, you know, you know, complaining or not signing up because it wasn't the hours they needed. And then as far as class, you know, camp ending at three, you run into that problem because most parents, again, they work nine to five, right? So these hours just don't work for them. And if you're a single parent or if you're a parent that needs childcare, um, you know, it just doesn't work for them. Again, our job here is to be of service to these people and provide an over-the-top service. So we've made adjustments to our marketing, we've made adjustments to our camps, and now, you know, we're, we're killing it. Um, a year ago, this time, we had roughly 20, 15 to 20 people signed up on camp, um, and right now we're at 275, I believe, was last, that was last week. I'm sure it's even higher than that now. We've probably broken 300 people doing camps throughout the summer. And our goal is 500 weeks sold. So we changed it to an earlier option, 7.30. Parents have plenty of time. They can drop their kid off. Hell, they can go to Starbucks and get a coffee before work. So it works out really well. They have time to drop their kids off. Um, if they want to drive, you know, if it's, a, if it's a parent that just wants to let their kid uh, hang out for the day, they can come pick them up at 3 o'clock. No problem. Um, that is that early bird price. Um, the next option here is our 7.30 to 6 p.m. option. This is for most parents that obviously have to work. Uh, we just charge an extra $20 for that late pickup. So even the kid that was doing $149, our early bird pricing, um, and they need to stay till 6, that's immediately $169 a week. Okay. Um, and again, we're going to up these prices next year. Um, we're we're going to start at 179. Um, so our punch card option is a pretty cool thing. And I'm going to get into this here. Uh, it's $250 um, and the parents get five individual days of camp. They can use um, those five days throughout the summer. All they have to do is let us know 24 hour notice. So it's, it's obviously much higher. It's $250 a week. You know, they're paying $50 a day, but what they're doing is they're buying freedom. So as long as they let us know within 24 hours of coming to camp, you know, they can just basically bring their kid uh, to any of those individual days that they might need. Um, our pricing is tiered to encourage the family to buy early, right? We want to sell out those spots super early. We don't want to have open spots um, in our camp. My goal is by June 1st, we have 500 weeks sold and we are at capacity and we are turning people away because um, at that point we can actually start selling slots for next year. My goal is to start selling summer camp next year, this summer. All right. Um, and the way they reserve their spot, um, so you know, say they get that early bird pricing at 149, they reserve their spot early. Um, it is a $50 non-refundable deposit. So the $50 will count towards their price, you know, towards their payment of their membership as long as they come. If for whatever reason they don't come, that $50 deposit stays with us. It is reserving their spot because we can now not sell that spot to someone else. 
All right, so I'm gonna show you our pricing here. Um, the Black Friday, you know, Christmas sales that we do around 149 a week. Um, again, that is for the early option, so they get out at three o'clock. If they wanna stay later, all of these options increase by $20. Um, so, you know, you can just see here, we do the early bird pricing at 149, January 1st, 159, and then every month we just increase by $10. And then that last month, right, when June 1st hits, boom, it jumps a $20 jump there. We're going up to 219 a week. Um, so pretty straightforward guys, but doing this tiered option has greatly increased our sales because what happens is if it's just 219 or if it's 199 the entire time, parents have no incentive to sign up early, right? Um, whereas now we've had parents, you know, by January one, they're like, oh my God, it's 159. That's so cheap. We're like, yeah, cool. They're like, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and buy uh, six weeks. Um, we don't know which week they're coming to yet. We make them choose by April 1st. They have to start choosing their weeks. Um, but a lot of people will just go ahead and purchase like six or seven or eight weeks because they're like, well, I know I'll use them. I don't know when we're going on vacation, um, but they don't need to know right away. They can just put the $50 deposit down and it reserves their spot and then we'll figure out those weeks as we get closer. All right, so summer camp notes. Um, these are just things for us. I'm just gonna be completely honest with you guys. We do not take our campers on field trips. I know a lot of people do that. Um, my opinion, it increases liability. It increases costs. Unless you have buses already, you know, ready for that. We have two buses, but like I said, you know, we do 50 kids a week in camp. Uh, our two buses fit 28 kids. So we would be doing, you know, four trips uh, to get all those kids uh, back and forth from an event. So, you know, it increases liability. You have the liability of a, something happening to a child, getting in a car accident, losing them. Um, you know, one of the summer camps here in Charleston, another, not a Taekwondo school, but another business, they take like 50 kids to the beach. Uh, taking 50 kids to the beach for me would be a nightmare. That's something I definitely do not want to do. Um, so I think it increases liability, increases your cost. You need more transportation. You need more staff members. Uh, to my honest opinion, it's just, it's too expensive. Um, I personally, that's why our new location, we have a built-in patio, a massive patio, about 2,000 square feet. And our, you know, that's what we do. We put basketball goals out there. We put picnic tables. We put things for kids to spend time outside, but they're still at our location. Um, again, you know, just offering amazing value to our people. Um, you know, we have a theme for each day of the week and we email out before camp starts. So what we do is, you know, if camp's starting on Monday, we'll email parents Saturday and Sunday, letting them know, hey, congratulations. We're really excited to have you for camp. Make sure little Johnny wears comfortable clothing. Um, you know, he brings brings a snack and he brings his lunch every day. We don't provide snack or lunch. Uh, we do have a water fountain. So if they want something besides water, they can bring it um, and they need to bring a lunch and a snack every day. But we'll let them know that each day has a theme, right? So Monday might be dodgeball, Tuesday might be Nerf Wars, Wednesday might be laser tag, you know, Thursday we're doing Minecraft. We let them know what each day of the week is going to be so they can plan for that. If it's Nerf Wars, you know, the kids need to be able to bring their Nerf guns. So uh, you want to give them plenty of time, uh, plenty of heads up to make that happen. And again, if possible, spend time outside. It doesn't have to be a ton of time. You don't have to just go to the beach. You don't have to go to a theme park or anything like that. Just get them outside. Even if you can rope off a section of your parking lot and the kids are playing cornhole or they're playing, you know, any event that's outside that's safe, right? And in and, and a safe environment. Um, one thing to remember here, this is tough for me, but my staff is great at this, is uh, kids are in a different mindset than normal class time. You know, when they're in class, they're, hello, Master Ryder, how are you? Give me a deep bow. And, you know, they're very focused. Whereas um, when it comes to camp, the expectations are different. All right. So keep it fun. Um, don't be in your uniform. You don't need to be in your uniform for summer camp. Wear comfortable clothing. Look like they look, right? Make it fun and exciting for them. So remember, kids are going to be a little crazier. They're going to be a little wilder. We still want to keep them under control, but just know that, you know, it's going to be a little different than a regular class. And your goal is just to keep it fun. So they want to come back. Um, we're going to give you our camp outline. Again, guys, you've got tons of downloads you're going to get um, for for this week. And I hope it sparked some questions. Ask me questions. I would love to help. All right, guys, next year we're moving into birthday parties, okay? Um, and birthday parties by the numbers, all right? We do about five birthday parties per month without marketing. Um, that is purely based on just our emails alone. So we have a, a, a web page on our website. We have a landing page on our website for our birthday parties. Um, we get people hit, hit us up every month asking questions about birthday parties, and we do book some. Um, but also, our Zen Planner is automatically set up where it sends out emails every month. So if anyone has a birthday party coming up, it shoots them an email that says, Happy Birthday. Um, you know, happy birthday from the team at Charleston Taekwondo. Our adult kid, our adult students actually, you know, it just gives them a happy birthday email. We're thinking about you. Come to class. Whereas for our kids, it says, hey, happy birthday. Your birthday's coming up in two months. Um, have you thought about having a, a martial arts birthday party? 
And then again, the next month, we hit them up again. Hey, um, would you like to have a martial arts birthday party? Here's what it includes. Here's why it's awesome. Here's why it's life changing, right? Um, and then the week, the month of, we obviously hit them up one more time. So we market to them, you know, two to three months out, just asking them would they like to have their birthday party and a list of available time slots that we have that they can reserve. Um, so we charge $299 for our birthdays and we do five parties a month. Um, my first party I did was $149. I didn't know. Honestly, I just kind of wung it and didn't know. That was six years ago. Uh, since then, we went to $199, $249, and now $299. Uh, we do five parties a month on average, which means we're making you know just shy of $1,500 in revenue. That alone puts almost $18,000 a year in our pocket just from having parties. All right. Um, and then each of those parties, you know, they range between 10 to 25 kids. All right. Uh, we sign about three kids on a trial membership per party. So that means we're putting 180 members um, in our program a year. So just for having birthday parties, you know, that's a great way to think about it, is how much money would you spend to get in front of 25 kids? Um, you know, you, people go to schools to teach and things like that. Um, I think it's good. However, if you could just simply get those kids to come to your program and not to mention their parents are dropping them off it's much better for you because they get to see your facility, they get to see you in your environment, and it becomes more real. Um, so it's a better experience. Again, you know, we average three kids per trial membership on our birthday party. Well, like I said, we know it's 180 members a year, roughly, um, and we give them a 50% off um, trial. So our trial is normally $49 for four weeks and includes a free uniform. Anyone that comes to the birthday party will get a free trial, or sorry, a 50% off their trial. And what we do is we have one of those stands professionally made, the, the stands that roll out that you can take to events. And it just says, you know, um, our birthday party special. Thanks for having your birthday party at Charleston Taekwondo. As our way to say, you know, happy birthday and thank you. We're offering 50% off our trial offer for all members. You get four weeks of classes plus our free uniform for $24. I mean, guys, you can't beat that, right? So it's just in their face. We just remind them at the end of the their birthday party. We don't spend too much time marketing it because one, there's a sign right when they walk in so they can obviously see that offer. And then right at the end of the party, we're like, hey guys, you know, thank you little Johnny for having your birthday party here. Let's all give him a hand. And then when it's over, we say, you know, hey guys, if anyone would like to continue doing martial arts, if you had fun today and you want to be a ninja when you grow up, you know, talk to mom and dad. I can help you guys get signed up for our trial offer. It's only $24 and you get uh, four weeks of class. You get an entire month of classes and you can take your uniform with you today. So it's just something cool that we just offer really quickly to give it out to them. You know, between those trial offers, that's an additional $4,400. So right there, if you look at that, right, we're already at $22,000 a year that we're making just off running our birthday parties. Um, and then again, you know, roughly 40% conversion rate. I mean, that's low. I'm doing 40% just for low numbers here to show you worst case scenario. Um, if you do 40% conversion rate out of 180 members, that means you're bringing home about 72 members that are becoming full-time members in your program. Our average client value, you know, over $150 a month. You guys, you're putting $10,000 a month in your pocket. I mean, if this doesn't promote you, if this doesn't pump you up to run birthday parties, um, I'm not really sure what will. All right, guys, you can literally fill your entire school with birthday parties. All right. If you do like us, five birthday parties a month, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 people a month in your school that don't know anything about your program. Right. And then they're bringing or your, your kids are there and they're running, you know, say a student's there and he wants to have his birthday party. He invites all his friends from school. The parents are going to sing your praises about how great your program is. So not only are you having 25 you know, kids in your school checking out your program, but you're also having cheerleaders there talking about how amazing your program is. Birthday parties are an easy, easy way to fill your entire school. All right, guys, let's talk about the birthday parties. I'm going to break it down for you here. So like I said, we charge $2.99 for the birthday party, and it does include 1.5 hours of fun, all right? So for an example here, if the birthday party starts at 12, um, the birthday party will end at 1.30. I have staff get there roughly 20 minutes before things start, and I'll tell you why. Uh, we get there 20 minutes early, set up the decorations, we set up the cake, we provide the cake, uh, we set up the cake, the decorations, the table, everything we need. It's really quick. It only takes about 10 minutes to set everything up. So we're there about 10 minutes early, just kind of hanging out in case parents show up. 
the birthday child always shows up early for their birthday party. Right? They're excited, so they get there probably 10 to 15 minutes early. Um, I will go ahead and talk to them, explain how everything's going to work, and you know, get them excited for an event that's about to happen. So say the party starts at 12. Uh, to be honest, the friends don't usually show up until 12.10 or 12.15. They're always late. Uh, maybe it's a kid thing, maybe it's a parent thing, maybe it's a Charleston thing, but our parents, we don't start our parties until about 12.15. So about 15 minutes late is when we actually start the party. So what's happening is we have two staff members at a party. One is up front talking to parents, um, introducing them, welcoming them to our studio, um, learning the kids' names. Um, you know, giving the parents to sign out waivers. Our other instructor is on the mat with the kids, and we just have a couple different games we can play with them. So we can have bag kicking going on. We'll just show them some basic kicks, have them running, doing flying side kicks, or punching on the back. You know, just kind of being silly kids. Um, a big fan favorite is just playing Ninja Ninja Turtle, and that's just like Duck Duck Goose, um, but we just call it Ninja Ninja Turtle, and the kids can play that for 30 minutes easy, right? So it's a great way when the kids come in, we just have them sit down, play Duck Duck Goose, or, you know, play Ninja Ninja Turtle, and while the parents are talking and catching up and filling out waivers. So one one member, uh, one staff member is responsible for the kids and one is responsible for the parents and the off the floor experience. Um, all right, from there, after the birthday party, right, we're going to break it down. You're going to get in, you're going to get a copy of this. But uh, once we get it started, the first five to 10 minutes, all we do is practice the kids. Yes, sir. No, sir. Have a seat. Stand up. Yes, sir. You know, basically getting them involved in our culture. After that, we do some, um, some line drills. And this gives the parents a chance to see that, hey, you know, we are very strict here. The kids are having fun, but they can see that we're charismatic and we're good with their children. After that, we'll do some basic back kicking. So push kicks, palm strikes, flying side kicks. Kicks, just some really basic stuff to get the kids moving um, and then we always finish with that like foot to foot sidekick and the reason we do that foot to foot sidekick is because we um, have the kids break boards after that. So all the kids get to break our rebreakable boards at Charleston Taekwondo, except for the birthday kid. He gets to break two real boards. So he's a little bit different, a little bit better because it's his party. He gets to break two real boards. So it's really exciting time. The kids are amazed. Like they want to break a real board. Awesome. You want to break a real board? Cool. Get mom to sign you up for your birthday party here. Um, after that's done, we bring the cake out, we sing happy birthday, and then one of our instructors will help cut the cake with the samurai sword with the, the child. Again, everyone thinks this is super cool because it's a samurai sword. Um, and then after that, the kids eat cake for roughly 10 minutes or so. Um, by this point, we have roughly 20 minutes left in the party. They play different games, dodgeball, nerf, you know, whatever they would like to, to play. Um, all right, again, so that's basically the one and a half hours of fun. Um, we have two martial arts professionals that are involved. The cake is included. I get our cakes made at Publix. They cost roughly like $25, and we get our school logo on them. And then it just says, Happy Birthday, Little Johnny, or whatever the name is. Um, they do cut the cake with a samurai sword. That's just what, a sword that we use over and over. I have heard of some schools gifting the sword as a gift to the child. You can do that. Um, I think you can buy them on Amazon for like $30 a piece. Um, it just basically increases the cost of your birthday party a little bit, um, but I'll, I will admit it is a pretty cool touch. Um, it does include birthday party utensils. So we provide uh, plates, napkins, and um, you know forks or spoons for the cake. Um, it does include drinks, it does include board breaking, and it does include the games. Um, so the only thing that we don't provide is if the parents want pizza or food, we don't provide that. We can all we can put that into the party if they want to provide it, we just don't provide it. Um, and then it does also not include um, party favors. So we used to do party favors, but the kids just kind of rip through them, eat the candy, and throw them away. So I just you know leave that up to the parents. If that's something they want to do, cool. Um, it's just not provided for us. All right, birthday party costs. Let's just show you again here. So yeah, the cake, um, sorry, I was about ten. I was about five dollars off. <clears throat> the cake costs about thirty dollars. Um, and that does include our logo. Uh, we get our cakes made at Publix. They are delicious. Um, so our staff, I pay them fifteen dollars an hour times two staff members. Um, so you know they get there a little bit early. They get there a little bit late. Um, you know, or stay a little bit late to clean. So like I said, you know they were they're each working two hours on a Saturday, and they get fifteen bucks an hour. So it costs me about sixty bucks for staff members. Um, the store is about thirty dollars. It is a one time cost, so you can use that over and over. Uh, the drinks and utensils is about ten dollars, right? We just use Capri Suns, really simple for kids to use. Um, or you can use like the, the miniature bottles of water is another good one. Um, so total cost you're in about a hundred dollars. Right for a, a two-hour party, um, and then the net for you is going to be about two hundred dollars, right? One hundred ninety-nine dollars. This is great. This is a great amount of money, right? So two hours of your life, hour and a half of your life, you just made two hundred dollars. 
It's amazing. Um, and again, you know, if staff earns, uh, if anyone signs up on trial membership, the staff will earn $15 per person that signs up. So a really good incentive uh, for them to do an amazing party because any of those kids that sign up, they're going to put more money in their pocket and they can directly tie that to their you know, client experience. All right, so let's talk about birthday party notes here. Uh, birthday parties should be fun. Keep it light. Keep it energetic. Don't be too serious. Um, remember, they're not on trials. They're just here for fun. All right, the party is all about the guest of honor. He or she will help demo all the games and drills. So they're your, you know, they're your ninja helper for today. Uh, they get to break the board. They get to cut the cake. They get to do everything um, that is uh, that is fun. They're your demo. Um, sorry, guys. I'm going to add a note in here really quickly. Do not open gifts at parties. All right. I repeat, do not open gifts at parties. All that is going to do is make one kid the center of attention, which is good because it's their party. However, what's going to happen is that kid um, is opening fun and having opening presents and having fun while all the other kids are just tired and just sitting there um, not doing anything. So it's not fun for them. All right. Uh, gifts will go home at the end of the party and we will, our staff will put them in the car for the parents. All right. So set the stage early. Practice yes sir drills first with the entire party before you do anything. It's very important to have those kids understand you are in control, you are in charge, and um, they must say yes sir or yes ma'am. All right. A simple stand up, sit down is a great way to practice this. Stand up. Yes, sir. Stand, you know, have a seat. Yes, yes, sir. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll have, all right, who's the fastest? Why is little Johnny faster than everyone else? Everybody look at little Johnny. Look how fast he is. Ready? And stand up. Yes, sir. He's perfect. And now all the kids want to mimic that, right? So we just practice this drill with the parent or with the kids. And then the parents get to see, oh, my God, this, my kid's saying yes, sir, and moving to this, this guy. Uh, what parent doesn't want to pay for that? All right, move very quickly from task to task. There should be no boring or dull movements, right? We pick, we pack in a lot of stuff in an hour and a half um, because we want make, to make sure that people are having a great experience, all right? So pack it in, um, you know, move quickly, talk fast, and get through these projects, all right? Um, all parents must fill out the liability waiver complete with their phone number and their email address. So again, that's why one person is on the floor with the kids and then one person is on um, off the floor with the parents. So they get to see, hey, um, you know, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Smith, I saw you forgot to leave us your phone number. You know, we're not going to call you. We're not going to spam you. So uh, we just need this purely for liability waiver. Um, you know, if the kid gets dropped off by a friend, it's obviously, you know, like the parent, little Johnny comes with a, a person from his class. You know, there's really not much you can do about that, right? But if you can, when possible, have the parents fill out the liability waiver with their phone number, with their email address. Again, put them in your email, um, you know, list and uh, they can opt out if they don't want to get those emails. Um, have a clear offer for all party participants. Uh, we do 24 weeks for four or $24 for four weeks plus our free uniform. This is a great way, um, you know, not only is our normal trial great, right? Uh, four weeks for $49. We're letting them know, hey, if you sign up, you know, we're going to give you, um, you know, $24 for four weeks. So it's half off. So they have more incentive to get signed up in the next 24 hours. Um, and then again, email that data follow up with participants reminding them of the offer. So email um, or shoot them a text message. Hey, um, hi, Mrs. Smith. You know, thanks for bringing little Johnny to the birthday party. We hope you had a great time. I uh, just wanted to remind you that, um, you know, if you would like to get signed up for a four week trial, we're doing a 50% off sale for everyone that came to the birthday party today. It's just $24. You get four weeks um, plus a free uniform. So again, just reminding it that follow up is key. All right. We learned that earlier in our boot camp. All right, guys, so resources and homework here. Um, check the resources this week to get complete outlines and pricing structure for our events, um, and then use our resources to organize your own events for the rest of 2018. Um, you are going to have a lot of downloads. You're going to have a lot of information. If it sparks any questions, please ask below. Uh, this is a very, very important week. This week alone, I mean, it's going to pay for your one event will pay for your entire boot camp. So um, that's why the boot camp, you know, we price it the way it is. The price is going to double for the next people going through the camp purely because this week alone is going to put, you know, uh, over, over a decade is going to put over a hundred thousand dollars in your pocket easily. So take this information, you know, use our downloads, ask questions, learn as much as you can. Hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, guys, have a great week.